Welcome back everybody, this is Brian Kirk with Eat Mile B, Taking the Road Less Traveled. Another episode of How to Get Citizenship In. This is episode number eight, and we are featuring the country of Australia. I'm sure this will be a popular one, as Australia is a preferred destination for a lot of people around the world. So the Australian nationality law details the conditions in which a person holds an Australian nationality. And the prime, it's the primary law governing nationality re regulations in the Australia and Citizenship Act of 2007, which came into first of force on the 1st of July 2007 and is applicable to all states and territories of Australia. All persons born in Australia before 20th of August 1986 were automatically citizens at birth, regardless of nationalities of their parents. Individuals born in the country after the date received Australian citizenship at birth if at least one of their parents is an Australian citizen or permanent resident. Four nationals may be granted citizenship after living in the country for at least four years, holding permanent residency for one year, and showing proficiency in the English language. Australia is composed in several of several British colonies founded in 18th and 19th centuries whose residents were British subjects. After federation and the dominion within the British Empire in 1901, Australia was granted more autonomy over time and gradually became independent from the United Kingdom. While Australian citizens are no longer British, they continue to hold favoured status when residing in the UK as Commonwealth citizens. Australians are eligible to vote in UK elections and serve in public office there. Terminology The distinction between the meaning of the term citizenship and nationality is not always clear, as the evident English language and differ, differs by country. Generally, nationality refers to a person's legal belonging to a national nation state and its common term is used in international treaties when referring to the members of the state. Citizenship refers to the set of rights and duties as a person who has in the nation. For 1970s, the two terms were fully interchangeable in the Australian context. Australian identity was tied by British heritage and Anglosphere cultural characterizations. For foreigners were previously required to assimilate into the dominant culture in order to become Australian citizens. As the country transitioned into a multicultural society made up of many different ethnic groups, a greater distinction was created between the citizenship and the nationality. The Australians were now bound together by a shared citizenship and civic identity rather than the monolithic culture, cultural background and common nationality. However, the delinking of these terms in Australia is neither complete nor clearly delineated. History The Colonial Era Policy British established, Britain, sorry, Britain established its first colony in Australia with the founding of New South Wales in, 19, in 1788. Over the course of the 19th century, the British presence expanding throughout the continent, by 1890 there were six separate self-governing territories in Australia. British nationality law applied to each of these colonies, as were the case sub anywhere in the British Empire. Australians and all other imperial citizens were British subjects. Any person born in the Australian King colonies, the United Kingdom, or anywhere else with the Crown Dominion was bo natural born sub British subject. British nationality law during this time was uncodified and did not have a standard set of regulations, relying instead on past precedent and common law. Until the mid 19th century, it was unclear whether the naturalization rules in the United Kingdom were applicable in other parts of the empire. Each colony had a wide discretion in developing their own procedures and requirements for admitting foreigners or as subjects. New South Wales and Tas Tasmania respectively enacted legislation in 1828 and 19 1834, enabling the denization, a process that partially granted foreigners the rights of British subjects, most notably property rights. Denizens were not con considered aliens, but were not past subject status in their own children by descent and were barred from Crown service and public office. Naturalization in Britain was achieved through individual acts of Parliament until 19, 1844 when a more streamlined administration project was introduced. The Australian colonies emulated the system in their own naturalization le legislation, which was enacted in all local legislators by 1871. 
1847, the Imperial Parliament formalized a clear distinction between subjects who naturalized to the UK and who did not see didn't, and those who did so in other territories. Individuals who naturalized in the UK were deemed to have received the status by imperial naturalization, which was valid throughout the empire. Those naturalizing in colonies were said to have gone through local naturalization and were given subject status valid only within the relevant territory. A subject who locally naturalized in North New South Wales was a British subject there, not in England or Victoria. Nevertheless, locally naturalized British citizens subjects, sorry, were still entitled to imperial protection when traveling outside of the empire. <laughs> Married women generally followed the nationality status of their husbands, beginning with the New South Wales in 1848. Each colony enacted legislation that automatically naturalized foreign women who married British subjects, mirroring the regulations enacted in the UK in 1844. After Britain established marital, marital denaturalization for British subjects, women who married foreigners in 1870, New South Wales adapted its rules to match this in 1875. The other Australian colonies did not adopt the legislation, but in practice, women who married foreigners who were automatically stripped of British subjects throughout, their, throughout Australia. Exclusion of Indigenous Australians Aboriginal Australians and Torres Strait leaders were British subjects in theory, but annual participation in colonial society and access to civil rights was limited. Queensland and Western Australia completely excluded Indigenous people from voting in the statute law, which, while there was no specific restrictions in legislation on Indigenous voting in other colonies, other regulatory barriers were often prevent exercising of that right. Between 1858 and 1926, New South Wales disqualified persons receiving aid of any public charitable institution from voting registration anyone living in aboriginal reserves were considered to be receiving aid some exceptions were afforded to landholders and half caste of aboriginals immigration from asia began in 1840s when chinese workers were invited to work in new south wales due to labor shortage although these laborers were met with immediate almost immediate disapproval the Australian gold rushes beginning in the 1850s attracted a steady wave of further migration. Growing hostility and anti-Chinese sentiment led to f several un social unrest and violent confrontations during the Lambing, Lambing Flat Riots in 1861. Following this, New South Wales imposed substantial restrictions on Chinese entry. Regulations varied by colony but clearly favoured the immigrants of European descent over members of the other ethnic groups. Queensland created two different sets of requirements in 1867 for naturalization and Asianic and African aliens and European and North American aliens. Asian and African applicants seeking to become subjects were required to have lived in the colony for three years and be married living together with their wives. Chinese migrants were specifically targeted in colonial legislation that forced charged fees for entry to our, or residents in the colonies and banned them from naturalizing as British subjects. In 1889, entrance fees for Chinese in each of the Australian colonies were standardized 10 pounds, except in Queensland, which required 30 pounds. Australian Federation. Aust discussions began as early as 1845 over the possible migration of Australian colonies. Conflicting interests between the separate colonies hindered Pacific's hindered chances of a union until 1880s, when France and Germany began expanding their their Pacific presence. The Federal Council of Australasia, created in 1885, consisted of four Australian colonies along with Fiji and was first attempted at forming a unified governing body better able to face external threats. Legislation passed by the Federal Council in 1897 allowed the su uh, British subjects who had naturalized in a colony under its authority to be considered as naturalized in other colonies. The council was abolished in 1900 and replaced on the 1st of January 1901 by a federated union of six colonies on the Australian mainland, the Commonwealth of Australia. The Commonwealth nationality legislation enacted in 1903 superseded all laws in the new states and naturalization as one of the states became automatically valid in all of them. 
The federal government reduced or continued and extended restrictions on persons of non-European, especially Asian. The federal government continued and extended restrictions on persons of non-European, especially Asian, descent as part of their white Australian policy. The Immigration Restriction Act of 1901 created the legal basis for administrating dictation tests, in which migrant could be required to write a passage of words in any European language as dictated by an immigration officer. Any person who failed was denied entry into Australia. While Maori from New Zealand technically fell under the exclusions criteria of the Act, representations made by the New Zealand government pressured the Commonwealth government into expe exponentially relaxing restrictions for Maori. The Naturalization Act of 18 1903 explicitly prohibited naturalization of anyone against of ancestry from Africa, Asia, or Oceania, except for New Zealand. Indigenous Australians who do not already have their names placed on a state electoral roll on the date of Federation in 1901 were prohibited from enrolling to vote until 1962. The Imperial Common Code. The Imperial Parliament brought regulations for British subject status into codified statute law for the first time within passage of the British Nationality Law and Status of Aliens Act in 1914. British subjects status was standardized as a common nationality across the empire. Dominions was adopted this act as part of the local legislation were authorized the grant subject status to aliens by imperial naturalization. Australians adopted the Common Code in 1920. 1914, the regulations codified the doctrine of coverture in imperial nationality law, where a woman's consent to marry a foreigner was also assumed to be their intent to denaturalize. British women who married foreign men automatically lost their British nationality. There were two exceptions to this. A wife married to a husband who lost his British subject status was able to retain British nationality by declaration and a British-born widow or divorcee who had lost their British nationality through marriage could reacquire the status without meeting residence requirements after the dissolution of, of her marriage. Australia's version of the Common Code regulation contained extensive measures of, for revoking British subject status from naturalization periods. Australia's version of the Common Code regulations contained extensive measures for revoking British subject status from naturalized persons. Individuals who showed disloyalty to the monarch were sentenced to imprisonment for at least one year or received a fine of more than 100 pounds within five years of naturalizing. Was not good or was not of good character when subject status was granted or lived outside the British Empire for more than seven years were liable to have their naturalization revoked. Unlike the 1903 Act, the Common Code enacted 1920 did not explicitly bar migrants on the basis of race. It instead allowed the government to deny naturalization to any person without cause. Only 45 people of Asian and this descent were naturalized between 1904 and 1953. Migrants of non-European ancestry were effectively barred from permanent residency and naturalization until 1957. By the end of the First World War, the Dominions had exercised increasing levels of autonomy in managing their own affairs and each of them had developed a distinctive national identity. Britain formally recognized that this at the 1926 Imperial Conference, jointly issuing the Balfour Declaration with all the Dominion heads of the government, which stated that the United Kingdom and Dominions were autonomous and equal to each other within the British Commonwealth of Nations. Full legislative independence was granted to the Dominions within the passage of the Statute of Westminster, 1931. Women's rights groups throughout the empire pressured the imperial government during this time to amend nationality regulations that tied a, mar a married woman's status to that of her husband, because the British government could no longer enforce legislative supremacy over the dominions after 1931 and wanted to maintain a strong constitutional link to them through common nationality code. It was unwilling to make changes without unanimous agreement among the dominions on this issue, which it did not have. Imperial legal uniformity was nevertheless eroded during the 1930s. New Zealand and Australia amended their laws in 1935 and 1936 to allow women to denaturalize by marriage to retain their rights as British subjects, and Ireland changed its regulations in 1935 to cause no changes to a woman's nationality after her marriage. 
Territorial Acquisitions The Queensland attempted to uh, preemptively counter German colonial interests in the Pacific by Annex Papua in 1883. Though this was met with disapproval from imperial authorities following the establishment of the German New Guinea, British Britain claimed in Papua, Papua in 1884 and formally annexed it in 1888. After Australian Federation in 1901, British ceded administrative control of the territory to the Commonwealth government in 1902, which is accepted by Australia in 1905. New Guinea and Nauru remained German colonies until the First World War, after which New Guinea became a League of Nations mandate under Australian control, while Nauru mandate was, Nauru's mandate was split between Britain, Australia, and New Zealand. In practice, Australia held sole governing authority over Nauru. While residents of Papua New Guinea became British subjects, that status was not extended to those who have mandated territories under the recommendation of the Permanent Mandates Commission. New Guinea and Nauru residents were treated as British protected persons and Australian protected persons after 1949, despite being granted subject status. British subjects and later Australian sub citizens of indigenous descent from Papua did not have an automatic right to residence, reside in mainland Australia and were required to apply for that separately. Persons with non indigenous ancestry held that right automatically. Changing relationship with Britain. The virgin developments in Dominion nationality laws, as well as the growing assertions of the local nationality identity and separation from the British Empire, culminated with the creation of Canadian citizenship in 1946, unilaterally breaking the system of common imperial nationality. Combined with the approaching independence of India and Pakistan in 1947, comprehensive nationality law reform was necessary at this point to address the ideas that were incompatible with the previous system. The Dominion governments agreed on the principle of equal standing for women in a reformed nationality system at the 1946 Commonwealth Prime Minister's Conference, and Australia amended its law to grant equal nationality rights in that same year. Australia enacted the Nationality and Citizenship Act in 1948 to create its own citizenship, which, became, which came into force on the 26th of January, 1949, shortly after the British Nationality Act in 1948 became effective throughout the Empire on the 1st of January, 1949. All British subjects were born, naturalized, or resi resident of at least five years in Australia automatically acquired citizenship on that date. British subjects born to a father who himself was born or naturalized in Australia, and British, sub British subject women who were married to someone qualifying as an Australian citizen also automatically acquired citizenship on that date. Papuans became Australian citizens automatically as well, but residents of that mandate territory of New Guinea did not. In 19 the 1948 Act redefined the term British subject as a citizen of Australia or other Commonwealth territory. Commonwealth citizens in a defining to the act of the, have the same meaning. British subject Commonwealth citizens status coexisted with the citizenship of each Commonwealth country. Our citizens were treated as if they were subjects, British subjects despite Ireland's exit from the Commonwealth in 1949. All Commonwealth citizens were, able, were eligible to become Australian citizens by registration rather than naturalization. After residing in Australia for at least five years by proceeding of the preceding five, seven years. Commonwealth citizens who became Australian citizens by registration were not required to swear an oath of allegiance because they were already subjects of the Crown. All other foreigners who acquired citizenship by naturalization after fulfilling a general residence requirement, citizens, candidates must also have resided in Australia or New Guinea for at least four years of the previous eight, while with one year of continuous residence immediately preceding an application. This was reduced to two of the previous eight years in 1973. Non-Europeans were allowed to apply for residency and denaturalization from 1957 if they were legally admitted to Australia and living in Australia for 15 years, reduced to five years in 1966. Almost all provisions to revoke citizenship from naturalized individuals was, were repealed in 1958. On the other hand, Australian citizens who acquired a foreign citizenship other than through marriage was automatically denaturalized and lost their Australian citizenship under this act. 
naturalizing foreigners, conversely, were not required to renounce their previous nationalities. Restrictions on Indigenous Australian rights remained in force until 18, 1960. Eligibility served to the armed forces and federal voting rights were extended to them in 1961 and 1962, and they began to be included as part of the state population counts in each national census following a 1967 referendum. All British subjects under the, the reform system initially held an automatic right to settle in the United Kingdom. Non-white immigration into the UK was systematically discouraged, but strong economic conditions in Britain following the Second World War attracted an unprecedented wave of colonial migration. In response, the British Parliament imposed immigration controls on the subjects originating from outside the British Islands with the Commonwealth Immigrants Act of 1962. This restriction was somewhat relaxed in 1971 for patriarchs subject to whose parents or grandparents were born in the United Kingdom, which gave effective preferential treatment to the, white, to the white Commonwealth citizens. As a sign of Australia's changing relationship with Britain, Australian passports were no longer labelled with the phrase British passport beginning in 1967. Legislative changes in 1969 meant that the Australian citizens technically ceased to be British subjects in that year, but retained the status of British subjects instead. Indian Ocean Territories The Cocos, or Keeling Islands, and the Christmas Islands were respectively annexed in the Empire in 1857 and 1888. The Cocos Islands were first directly administered by the UK until 1878, when it was transferred for Sea Leone, then to the Strait Settlement in 1886, and finally developed the settlement of Singapore in 1903. Christmas Islands were similarly incorporated into Singapore in 1900, following the Second World War. The Australian government ex expressed its interest in acquiring both territories for strategic and commercial reasons. The Cocos Islands for its airstrip and the Co Christmas Islands for its phosphate. Sovereignty over the Cocos Islands was transferred to Australia in 1955. Island residents became Australian citizens at the time of transfer while retaining UK citizenship. Christmas Islands were transferred to Australia in 1958 under largely the same terms. Citizens from, citizens from both territories did not have automatic right of residence on the Australian mainland, as was the case of residents of Papua and New Guinea. Burmese Independence Burma gained independence from the United Kingdom on the 4th of January 1948. The British Parliament enacted the Burma Independence Act of 1947 to remove British subject status from all individuals who held that status solely through their connection with Burma. Burmese residents in the UK or the colonies would make formal claims to retain subject status. The Australian Parliament did not pass similar legislation addressing the, this effect, leaving only common law to apply. Common law of the time, dict of the time dictated that only Burmese residents in Burma at the time independence lost British nationality, while uh, every Burmese person who left Burma permanently before independence or within a reasonable time af thereafter. Retained British subject status. This created an anomalous situation where Burmese living in Australia ceased to be British subjects under UK law, but continued the status in Australian law. The Nationality and Citizenship of Burmese Act of 1950 addressed the discrepancy, removing British subject status from persons connected with Burma, individuals who lost status through the Act but had become Australian citizens in 1949, who retained their citizenship by making formal declarations within two years of the Act's passage. Dissolving Imperial Links By the 1970s and 1980s, most colonies of the British Empire that have become independent and remaining ties with the United Kingdom had significantly weakened. Australia abolished a preference that would afford citizenships to the other, from other Commonwealth countries and lifted restrictions on migrants of non-European descent in 1973. The 1973 amendment renamed the Nationality and Citizenship Act 1948 to the Australian Citizenship Act of 1948. The 1973 amendment renamed the Nationality and Citizenship to the Australian Citizenship Act 1948. An anniversary of this event has been celebrated since 2001 as, a nas as Australian National Citizenship Day. The UK itself updated its nationality law to reflect the more modest boundaries of the remaining territory and possessions within the British Nationality Law Act of 1981, which redefined British subject to no longer also being Commonwealth citizens. Australian citizens remain Commonwealth citizens in British law 
are still eligible to vote and stand for public office in the UK. Further reforms in 1984 fully abolished British subjects to status in Australian law and removed remaining gender imbalances in national regulations. Voting eligibility rules were changed to require citizenship, Australian citizenship instead of British subject status, but any British subject without citizenship already enrolled to vote before the 26th of January 1984 had the right to continue participating in elections. Non-citizen British subjects could no longer apply for British Australian passports beginning in that year. After passages of the Australian Act in 18, 1986, the High Court was con has considered any persons without Australian citizenship, citizenship to be aliens. While British subjects could, could not have been considered foreign at the time of the Federation, the severing of constitutional ties with the United Kingdom created a definitive separation between the two countries. British citizens have not, since been considered subjects of a foreign power and are ineligible to serve in Parliament of Australia under par Section 44 of the Constitution of Australia. The eligibility of 10 sitting legislators were, was questioned under this section of the Constitution during the 2017-2018 Australian Parliamentary eligibility crisis, leading to eight disqualifications in our subsequent court proceedings. Transition to national citizenship. Trans territorial citizens who have previously been barred from automatic right of permanent residence on the Australian national mainland were granted entitlement in 1984, and the general residence of requirement for acquiring citizenship was relaxed in, the t in that year, as well as naturalization candidates were required to have lived in Australia for at least five years preceding an application, while holding permanent residence for at least one year during the aggregated period. No Australian citizen has been required to obtain an entry permit to the country since 18, 1984. Concerns over influx of unintended immigration and perceived exploitation of nationality law by illegal immigrant, migrants to gain residence in Australia created the impetus for ending unrestricted birthright citizenship in 1986. Children born in the country since then are only granted citizenship by birth. At least one parent is a citizen or permanent resident. Naturalization candidates have been required since 1993 to recite a citizenship pledge, which they commit their loyalty to the country of Australia rather than swear an oath of allegiance to the Australian monarch. Automatic denaturalization of Australians acquiring foreign nationalities was repealed in 2002. Citizenship tests were introduced in 2007 and the general residence requirement was increased back to four years as well. Government powers for citizenship deprivation were greatly expanded in 2015. Australians holding another nationality engaged in terrorist activities were subject to automatic loss of citizenship. These measures were amended in 2020 to require an explicit revocation order from the Minister of Home Affairs. Nationality Agreements and Former Territories Papua New Guinea became independent in 1975. Indigenous residents born in Papua or New Guinea the two grandparents also born in either territory or surrounding area who do not have right of citizen residence mainland Australia do not hold foreign nationality automatically became citizens of the new country. Former Australian citizens born in a Papua before the independence seeking to resume citizenship can, cannot reacquire the status by descent because Papua fell with the definition of Australia before 1975. Applicants cannot claim citizenship through their birth overseas. Since 2007, Papua New Guinea citizenship, citizens who lost Australian citizenship or independence but have a parent born in Australia mainland can apply for special resumption of, service, of citizenship. Acquisition and loss of citizenship. So anyone who is wanting to get Australian citizenship, listen to this part right here. All persons born in Australia before the 20th of August 18, 1986 automatically receive citizenship at birth regardless of the nationalities of their parents. Individuals born in the country since that date received Australian citizenship at birth if at least one parent is a citizen or permanent resident. A person born outside Australia to an Australian citizen parent is eligible to acquire Australian citizenship by descent through application. If the parent required acquired citizenship by descent or adoption, the parent must have resided in Australia for at least two years prior to the applicant's birth. Adopted children have, are treated as if they were naturally born to an adopting parent or the time of location of the adoption. 
two adopted those adopted in Australia automatically receive citizenship while those adopted overseas are eligible to apply. Children who are born in Australia but not acquire citizenship at birth may otherwise automatically require citizenship if they are an ordinary resident in the country by, by the, for the 10 year period immediately following birth. Stateless children born in the country are entitled to citizenship without further residence requirements. Voluntary Acquisition Foreigners over the age of 18 may become Australian citizens by conferral after legally residing in the country for more than four years and holding permanent residency for at least 12 months. Applicants must not have been outside Australia for longer than 12 months in the preceding four years, with absences totaling less than 90 days in final year. Candidates who are overseas while enlisted in the Australian Defence Force deemed to be engaged in activities for Australia's benefit or employed in a position that requires travel abroad can be considered to have fulfilled special residence requirements. Members of the, of the Australian Commonwealth Games team and holders of distinguished talent visas are also ineligible for a special residence of consideration since 2021. Applicants between the ages of 18 to 59 must complete a citizenship test in which they demonstrate basic competency in English language as well as sufficient knowledge of the country and citizenship. Successful candidates aged 16 and older are required to make a citizenship pledge which they commit their loyalty to the country of Australia. These are usually administered by local government at citizenship ceremonies that take place over about six months after approval. Between the 1st of July 2020 and the 30th of June 2021, over 140,000 people obtain, obtained Australian citizenship by conferral. Pathway for New Zealand citizens. New Zealand citizens are generally exempt from immigration restrictions under the Trans-Tasman Travel Agreement and fall under unique regulations. Any new, t new Zealander who settled in Australia on or before the 26th of February 2001 is automatically considered as a permanent resident for nationality purposes, while those who arrive after this date are required to first obtain permanent residency before they naturalize. Children born in Australia to New Zealand citizenships between the end of unrestricted birthright citizenship on the 20th of August 1986 and the 31st of August 1994, exempt non-citizens are considered to be, have been permanent residents for the time spent living in the country during this period. The Special Category Visa, or SVCV, was introduced for New Zealanders citizens on the 1st of November, or 1st of September, sorry, 1994. All New Zealand citizens already in the country on this date were automatically granted this visa and it is issued on arrival to New Zealand after that date. A child born in Australia between the 1st of September 1994 and the 26th of February 2001 to a New Zealand parent with an SCV or permanent visa is an Australian citizenship by, citizen by birth. 4th of April 2002, Australians who became citizens of another country automatically lost Australian citizenship. This restriction did not apply to those who acquired a foreign citizenship by marriage, did not acquire naturalization candidates through relinquish their new or their former nationalities. Children born to individuals who lost their citizenship under the provision for automatic loss before 2002 are eligible for a special conferral of citizenship. Former citizens may subsequently apply for nationality restoration, provided that they would have been subject to, leader, to hardship had they not renounced their Australian citizenship or were automatically deprived of their Australian citizenship before 2002. Individuals resuming citizenship regain the same type of citizenship they held previously. A person who has acquired citizenship by descent relinquishes it, then resumes citizenship, would regain citizenship by descent. Citizens of Papua New Guinea who lost their Australian citizenship on independence in 1975 but had, have had a parent born of the Australian mainland have been able to apply for special resumption of citizenship since 2007. So that is the last part of our how to get citizenship in Australia. I have to apologize for the change in venue in this video as uh, the microphone, the, camp, the battery on the microphone died and I had to reshoot a couple scenes when I wasn't in the car because I wasn't aware of it at the time and I couldn't film anything else because the battery was dead. So. Apologies again. 
Until next time, keep eating to your own beat, take the road less traveled, and have a great day.